Hello students, how are you all? I hope you are doing absolutely fine. So welcome all of you at Ariser Talent. And in our previous lecture, we have discussion about the sum of the NTC questions from your chapter that is electricity. Now we are proceeding to the questions that are from your stage two of the NTC and other Olympiad exams. So let's begin with the questions here. So the first question in the sequence we have is this. Again, we are provided with the combination of the resistances. So you can notice here that how important the topic combination of the resistances is. From the combination of the resistances, almost questions uh, are asked in the exam, whether it may be for finding out the voltage, it may be the finding out of the potential difference or to determine the current in the circuit. So let's solve this question here. In the given circuit given, the ratio of work done by the battery to maintain the current between points A and B to the work done for the whole circuit will be. So what you have to do in this system, you have to determine the ratio of work done. So firstly, we have to determine the ratio of work done. So here we are provided with the two points. So what we have to find? We have to find out WA is to WB. Now, for determining the work done, what you needed, you just needed the equivalent resistance of the system because the current that is flowing in the system is I. So there is no need to find out the I here. So what we have to actually determine here, we have to determine the equivalent resistance here. Now, from this diagram, you can see that between points A and B, there are the three resistances that are connected in the parallel. So the resistance connected here are 1 ohm, 1 ohm and 1 ohm. So I can write here, R equivalent will be 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2 plus 1 upon R3. I am naming it R1, R2 and R3. And what will be the value of R1, R2, R3? It is 1 for all. And it came out to be 3 upon 1 and 1 upon R equivalent because it is a parallel combination here. So 1 upon R equivalent will be 3 upon 1. So I can say that R equivalent will have a value that is equal to 1 upon 3 ohm. So from this system, we have determined the value that is 1 upon 3 ohm for the system. Now, you can see here, when I redraw the circuit, the circuit can be look like this. 2 ohm, this A and B point, this 2 ohm again, this is a battery of 1.3 volt and the same current is flowing in the circuit. So what I can write here, this is our 2 ohm, this is again 2 ohm. And the equivalent resistance here we have determined is 1 upon 3 ohm. Now, this battery is 1.3 volt battery. If I am comparing these resistances, you can see that these all three resistances are connected in a series combination. So, we can find out RAB equal to 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 2. 3 will be the LCM and it came out to be 13 upon 3 ohm. So this will be the equivalent resistance of the system I am getting here. So what we have determined in this system, we have determined the equivalent resistance of the system. But we do not have to find out only the equivalent resistance. Actually, we have to determine the ratio of work done in both the system. So work done in any system is dissipated in the form of the energy and that energy will be in the form of the heat energy. So for calculating the work done, we will use the formula that is I square R. This is the formula for calculating the work done in the system. So this thing we have find out here. This is our equivalent resistance between point A and B. So I can write it as RAB. I can write it as RAB because it is the equivalent resistance between A and B. Now, 
this thing we I, we have determined for the whole circuit it means it came out to be r equivalent so we can write it as r equivalent now for calculating the work done in both the systems we will use the formula that work will be the product of power and time so the work will be p into t and for formula of power we have i square r into t now you have to determine the ratio of work done in both the systems we have so the work done in system a will be i square and between point a and b we have a resistance that is equal to 1 upon 3 ohm that is resistance between a and b and it is time t for determining the work for b it is equal to i square and equivalent resistance came out to be 13 upon 3 into t now we have seen that we have determined the resistances in both the systems and it came out to be i square 1 upon 3 t i square 13 upon 3 t now what you have to do here is so you have seen that we have determined the work done in both the cases but you have to determine the ratio of work done so i can do here wa upon wb w and wa upon wb came out to be i square r same current is flowing in the circuit so i will be cancelled by i and t will be cancelled by t and 3 will be cancelled by 3 so we will get wa upon wb equal to 1 upon 13 so the ratio came out to be 1 is to 13 in this case so this is the solution of this problem in spite of asking the equivalent resistance only the work done in the system has been asked so you have to just remember remember all the formulas that are related to power and work done in this chapter so just copy this solution from here so we can proceed to our next problem now let's move to the next question in this sequence we have Now, again we are provided with a combination of the resistances and what we have to determine what is the current supplied by the battery in the circuit shown below. You have to determine the value of current in the circuit. Each resistance used here is 1 kilo ohm. So, each resistance in the circuit is 1 kilo ohm. This is 1 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm, 1 kilo ohm. 1 kilo ohm, 1 and 1. Now, potential difference between point A and B is given that is equal to 8 volt. Now, you have to determine the value of current in the circuit, but here the system that is given, we can't resolve the system into the uh, simple form like the resistance are in series and resistance are in parallel. So, what we have to do? We have to assume a point between A and B that is point C and when A and B are kept at the same potential, there will be no current flowing in this circuit. So, I am assuming that here the point will be C. So, if I count all the peripheral points from this diagram, you can see that this is actually a diagram of hexagon 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 6 points we are getting here. Now, if you want to determine, you have to determine the current here and current will be determined only from Ohm's law. And Ohm's law states that V equal to IR and I will be equal to V upon R. So, this will be the formula we will use to, to calculate the current. But voltage we have 8 volt, we, volt we have to de determine the resistance in the circuit. Now, you can see that from that point A, this is our point A 
and how many resistances are passing across A, you can see that this is resistance number 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So, from, from point A, I can see here there are 5 resistances connected. From point A, number of resistance is equal to 5 and 5 resistances are of 5 kilo ohm because 1 1 each. So, from point A, I can find out equivalent resistance and it came out to be 1.5 kilo ohm. Now, look at the point B. Here is point B and you can see that from that point B, you have provided with the three resistances 1, 2 and 3. Now, for calculating the equivalent resistance here, we can see that from point B, number of resistances equal to 3. So, it is 3 kilo ohm and equivalent resistance will be 1 upon 3 kilo ohm. Now, again I am redrawing the circuit and circuit we can find out can be this is our battery and you have to determine the value of current in the system. This is our point A and this is our point B. So, the resistance that is from point A came out to be 1, 1 upon 5 kilo ohm and here the resistance is 1 upon 3 kilo ohm. Now, if I am going to determine the value of R, A, B, they both are in series. So, I can write 1 upon 5 plus 1 upon 3 and it came out to be 8 came out to be 8 upon 15 kilo ohm. So, this is our resistance and this is our voltage and what you have to determine? You have to determine the value of current. So, applying ohm's law, you can calculate the value of current from this equation. Now, I will be equal to V upon R. I is 8 volt and here it is 8 upon 15 kilo ohm. Now, I will be equal to 8 will be cancelled by 8 and 15 will be shifted in the numerator. Now, the value of the current came out to be 15 milli ampere. So, let us check the options here 64 milli ampere, 15 milli ampere, 9.87 and 1. So, we are getting our correct answer that is 15 milli ampere. So, this is the very different question uh, from your NTSC exams that in this question, you cannot directly found out the equivalent resistance of the system. So, what we have to do? You have to just take a point C between that and if I am assuming that no current is flowing in this wire, so equivalent resistance can be calculated by counting the peripheral points here. So, just copy this solution from here. Now, let us move to the next question in this sequence we have. Let's start, uh, let's start with our next question. In the circuit diagram given below, Vn and Vb are the potentials at point A and B. These are two points that are provided A and B. Now, you have to calculate the Va minus Vb in this system. So, firstly, 
you can see that in the upper arm two resistances are connected in series and this is our lower arm and in this lower arm again two resistances are connected in series so if i want to determine the equivalent resistance in upper arm equivalent resistance in upper arm it came out to be 10 ohm plus 20 ohm and it will give you 30 ohm so 30 ohm will be the resistance in case of the upper arm voltage equal to 30 volt so in case 1 value of current came out to be v upon r and 30 upon 30 will give you 1 ampere so 1 ampere will be the current in the upper arm now let us assume the lower arm will be our case number 2 in case number 2 if i am going to find out the equivalent resistance in lower arm it came out to be 10 ohm plus 5 ohm and it will give you 15 ohm now voltage here is 30 volt again value of current will be v upon r and 30 upon 15 will give you 2 ampere so you can say that 1 ampere current will be if current is divided here into two parts 1 ampere current will be flowing in this part and 2 ampere current will be flowing in the lower arm now what you have to calculate you have to determine the potential difference between these two points now if i'm uh, going to find out the potential difference between two points what i have to do i have to calculate va minus vb so if i am assuming the potential here will be v so it came out to be v minus va and in the second equation it came out to be v minus vb so v minus va and vb minus v in the first case it came out to be 10 into 1 equal to 10 volt and in our second case it came out to be sorry it is 20 into 1 20 into 1 it gave us 20 volt and in the second case it came out to be 5 into 2 because the current is 10 ampere here and it came out to be 10 volt so from these two equations if i am going to determine the value of va minus vb va minus vb it came out to be 10 volt so va minus vb will be our 10 volt so let us check the options first here Minus ten volt, minus twenty volt, zero volt, or the ten volt. So the correct option will be our ten volt. So here the correct answer is ten volt. So just copy this solution from here, so we can proceed to our next question. Now the next question in this sequence will be. this now what is given in the question three bulbs with individual power rating of 12 volt 2 volt and 6 volt are connected respectively in the circuit diagram you have to find out the amount of heat dissipated by each in 10 seconds so now you are provided with the three bulbs of each power rating p1 equal to 12 volt these are the given conditions here p2 equal to 2 watt and p3 equal to 6 volt you can see that three, these three bulbs are connected in the combination with the parallel combination 
सो वी विल कैलकुलेट द इक्विलेंट पावर हियर सो इक्विलेंट पावर केम आउट टू बी वन अपॉइंट ट्वेल्व प्लस वन अपॉइंट टू प्लस वन अपॉइंट सिक्स एलसीएम विल बी ट्वेल्व सो इट विल बी वन प्लस सिक्स प्लस टू एंड इट केम आउट टू बी नाइन अपॉइंट ट्वेल्व एंड द पावर ई इक्विलेंट पावर विल बी ट्वेल्व अपॉइंट नाइन दैट इज इक्वल टू फोर अपॉइंट थ्री वोट सो दिस विल बी अवर इक्विलेंट पावर नाउ what you have to determine you have to determine the amount of heat dissipated by each in 10 seconds so we are provided with the time and we have to calculate the amount of heat dissipated in the 10 seconds in each and every combination so what you will do you will just multiply the time that is 10 seconds with the power provided for the each bulb here so heat dissipated will be in the form of energy and for energy dissipation we have a formula that is equal to power into time it will be power into time so you will use this formula and calculate the heat dissipation in all the three cases so in 12 volt bulb it came out to be 12 into 10 it means 120 joule in second case the bulb is 2 watt so in 2 watt bulb it came out to be 2 into 2 2 into 10 it is equal to 20 joule in third case the bulb is of 6 watt so in 6 watt bulb it came out to be 6 into 10 that is equal to 60 joule so these are the power dissipations or this is the energy lost in the three bulbs that is 120 joule 20 joule and 60 joule now you can see that you do not need to determine the equivalent resistance of the system because we have only asked for the dissipation of energy in 10 seconds so just don't do this part here you can only do this part here for solving such kind of problem so the correct answer is 120 joule 20 joule and 60 joule so let us check the options here 8 1.33 and 4 120 20 and 60 so this is the correct answer we are getting here this is the power dissipation or dissipation of heat in the three bulbs so just copy this solution from here now let us move to the next question in the sequence we have micron wires a and b so you are provided with two wires so this is our wire number a and this will be our wire number b each of length 5 cm and radius 1 and 3 respectively so what you are provided you are provided with length of each wire length in this case is 5 cm and again length in the case of second wire is 5 cm radius of first wire is 1 cm and the radius of the second wire here is 3 cm so radius equal to 1 cm and here the radius will be 3 cm now they are connected in series and if a current of 5 ampere flows through the combination of the wires you have to determine the ratio of the potential difference between point a and b so what you have to do you have to calculate the potential difference in both the cases so firstly what we have to determine we have to determine the resistance in both the cases so firstly if i am going to calculate the area it came out to be pi r square and i can write it pi into 1 square that is equal to 
5. Now, this is our area number A and this is area for B. Again, this pi r square and it came out to be pi into 3 square. So, we can say that it is 9 pi. So, this is the area in both the cases. Now, the wire are of same material that is of the nichrome wire. So, I can say that the resistivity will be same in both the cases. So, for the formula of resistance, we have a formula that is R equal to rho L by A. And the wire is a nichrome wire. So, I can say that resistivity will be same in this case. Resistivity will be same. So, for calculating the resistance in wire 1, it will be rho into L upon pi. For resistance in wire B, it is rho into, again, here the length is 5. Length is 5 here. This is 5 and this is again our 5 and area came out to be 9 upon pi. So, this is the resistance of both the wires and the current of 5 ampere is flowing in the circuit. So, current 5 ampere is common for both. Now, what you have to determine? You have to calculate the potential difference of point A and B and their ratios also. So, the potential of the wire A, v, A will be VA and it came out to be IRA and for wire B, it came out to be IRB. So, this will be our potential in both the cases. So, VA upon VB will be equal to value of current is 5 ampere in both the cases. 5 into rho into 5 upon pi. It is 5 into rho into 5 upon 9 pi. Now, 5 will be cancelled by 5. Rho will be cancelled by rho. Pi and pi and 5 and 5 again will be cancelled. So, VA upon VB, 9 will be shifted in numerator, will be 9 upon 1. So, what is the ratio of potential between VA and VB? It came out to be 9 is to 1. So, this is the question which is completely based upon the dependence of resistance. So, let us check the options here. 1 is to 3, 3 is to 1, 9 is to 1 or 1 is to 9. So, it is 9 is to 1. You can see that the option 1 is to 9 is also given because the wrong answers are also provided with the right answers in the question. So, just focus on that, that the ratio will be 9 is to 1 because the numerator will be, uh, 9 will be shifted in the numer numerator. So, copy this solution from here so we can proceed to our next part. Now, let's move to the last question of this sequence. Now, the next question is, an electrical circuit shown below consists of a battery, a meter, three resistors and the two keys. This is key 1, key 2. You have to consider the two cases here. First case is, key 1 is closed and key 2 is open. And Key 2, K2 is closed and key 1 is open. So, you have to consider the two cases here and you have to determine the ratio of respective current in both the cases. So, firstly, what I am considering here, I am considering here case 1. What case 1 says, K1 is closed and K2 is open. So, key 1 is closed and key number 2 is open. Now, if the key 1 is closed and key number 2 is open, so I can say that this system will not going to work. If it is an open system, it means there will be no current flowing in this key 2. So, I am not assuming key 2 in this part. So, what are the resistances here? 12 ohm and 3 ohm. So, 
equivalent resistance in case number 1 will be 3 ohm plus 12 ohm. Why it is 3 ohm and 12 ohm? Because K2 is open, so no current will be flowing through this wire in this case. So, it will give you 12 plus 3 that is equal to 15 ohm. Now, what is the value of voltage in this case? The voltage of a battery is 12 volt. And what you have to determine? You have to determine the current in the case 1. So, I am calling it as I1, V1 and this will be calculated as R1. So, it came out to be I equal to V1 upon R1. So, it will be equal to 12 upon 15 ampere. So, this will be our current in the case number 1. Now, let us do the case number 2. Case number 2. K2 is closed and K1 is open. K2 is closed and K1 is open. So, if K2 is closed it and K1 is open, if it is an open circuit, no current will be flowing in this branch. Only you have to assume the resistances that is equal to 12 and 4. So, equivalent resistance R2 in this system will be equivalent resistance that is equal to R2 will be 12 plus 4. So, 12 ohm plus 4 ohm will give you 16 ohm and again the value of voltage here is 12 volt that is V2 and you have to determine the I2 in this case and I2 came out to be V2 upon R2. V2 is 12 and R2 is 16 ohm. So, current came out to be 12 upon 16 ampere. Now, this is our 12 upon 15 ampere in the first case and in the second case we have determined the current that is equal to 12 upon 16 ohm. Now, you have to determine the ratio of current in both the cases. So, let us determine the ratio of current in both the cases. It will be our I1 upon I2. Now, this is our next question. An electric circuit shown below consists of battery, a meter and you can see that three resistors are connected here and there are the two keys that is key 1 and key number 2. Now, you have to consider the two cases here. The key that is K1 is closed and K2 is open and K2 is closed and the K1 is open. So, these are the opposite cases given here and you have to determine the ratio of respective currents in both the cases. So, here are two cases provided. So, let us assume that our case number 1, what are the conditions in case 1? K1 is closed and K2 is open. What is given in case number 2? K2 is closed and K1 is open. Now, firstly, if I am assuming that K1 is closed and K2 is open, if K1 is closed, then the current will be only flowing through this branch and in K2, there will be no flow of the current. So, we will not count this resistance because the circuit will be open here. So, this 12 and 3 will give you a parallel combination. So, R equivalent or we can write that is the case 1. So, I can write here 1 upon R equivalent of A will be equal to 1 upon R1 plus 1 upon R2. And the resistances in this case will be K1 is closed. So, it is 1 upon 3 and it will be 1 upon 12. So, the LCM will be 12 and it will be 4 plus 1. R equivalent of A will be calculated as 12 upon 5 ohm. And you have seen that the battery of 12 volt is connected here. So, what will be the value of current in the first case? In case number 1, the value of the current will be V upon R and it came out to be 12 upon 12 upon 5. So, 12 will be cancelled by 12 
and the current in the system number 1 calculated as 5 ampere. So, this is our I1. Now, let us move to the case number 2. In case number 2, key two, K2 is closed, key number 2 is closed and key number 1 is open. If 2 is closed, 1 is open, I will not count this part of the circuit because no current will be flowing in this part. So, 4 ohm and 12 ohm, again they are connected in parallel. So, we can write it as R equivalent of B will be 1 upon 12 plus 1 upon 4 and it came out to be 1 upon 1 plus 3 that is equal to 4 upon 12 and R equivalent in case of B will be 12 upon 4 that is equal to 3 ohm. Now, if I want to determine the value of the current here, voltage again is 12 volt and I will be equal to V upon R. V is 12 and R is 3. So, the value of the current here will be 4 ampere and I can write it as I2 because it is our case number 2. Now, we have calculated the current in both the cases as K1 is closed here and K2 is closed here. And what we have to determine? We have to determine the ratio of I1 upon I2. So, I1 upon I2 came out to be 5 upon 4. So, I must say that ratio will be 5 is to 4. So, the ratio of current in both the cases came out to be 5 is to 4. So, which option is correct here? You can see that option number 4 will be the correct answer that is 5 is to 4. So, this is again a very interesting question you are provided with and this is your NTSC question that has been asked in your previous exam. So, these questions are over for today. We will deal with many more questions and many more problems in our next lecture. Thank you so much and have a nice day.